Uncle Yahya, my father said that you are the best person to tell us about the Messenger of Allah. May peace be upon him, because you know so much about him. Yes, Anas. I know many stories about the life of our noble prophet. Peace be upon him. Please, Uncle Yahya, tell us how the revelation came to the noble prophet. Please? All right, all right. What can I tell you about him, my little ones? What can I say? Uncle Yahya, tell us everything you know about the Prophet, peace be upon him. Please, Uncle, we want to know everything. Everything. Tell us the story of Prophet Muhammad's birth. But I want to know how the revelation came to him. Okay, okay, Anas. I will tell you that story. But let me begin with his birth and childhood, so you know what his life was like from the beginning. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was born on Monday, the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal, in the year of the elephant. This was a time when peace prevailed over Mecca after its people celebrated victory over Abraha's army. Amina bint Wahab felt her heart overflow with joy and she began to look up at the sky. She remembered the vision she had seen a few days earlier. She was standing alone in the desert when suddenly... A light emanated from her, filling the sky and illuminating everything from the east to the west. She cried as she looked at her baby, whom she had carried without any suffering during her pregnancy. Oh, dear husband, O oh Abdullah, how long must I whisper to you every night? Why did you leave me when it had not even been two months since our wedding? Now I have given birth to our child. An orphan who will never see his father. Never mind, dear husband, I am calm. I felt none of the pain of childbirth that other women speak of. See how beautiful he is. How beautiful is the face of he who is filled with light. Do you know, O oh Abdullah, I feel that this child will be important and that he is unlike any other child. Amina sent the good news of the birth of Muhammad, peace be upon him, to his grandfather. The news reached Abdul Muttalib when he was at the Kaaba with a group of chieftains of the Quraysh. He rejoiced as Muhammad was the son of his son Abdullah, his most beloved child. What will you call him, Abdul Muttalib? Here, Abdul Muttalib remembered the voice that spoke to him in his sleep, and he thought for a while, then he repeated what he had heard Muhammad, Muhammad. I will call him Muhammad. I will call him Muhammad. And why do you not name him after our forefathers? Muhammad, so that he is praised by those on earth and he who is in the heavens. Excuse me now, gentlemen. I will now circumambulate the Kaaba to thank and praise Allah. It was the custom among the Arab nobility, my little ones, to send their young with wet nurses who came to Mecca to take children and raise them in the desert. This strengthened their bodies and made them resilient, as well as perfecting their Arabic. When the wet nurses came to Mecca, they all rushed to obtain a child from a prosperous family who would be able to pay the fees. Each woman selected the child she desired, except Halima Sadia, the fortunate. Halima left the lands of her tribe, Beni Sa'ad, accompanied by her husband and their child on a weak donkey and a camel that could hardly walk. They both dreamed of finding a wealthy family who wanted to send their child to the desert. The scorching road to Mecca is making me tired. And my son is crying as his hunger worsens. I don't have enough milk to feed him. What should I do, Abba Abdullah? The problem is that we didn't find a child from a wealthy family. The money paid to us would have really helped to alleviate our hardships. This is a difficult year. There is little rain, and the camel is not providing us with enough milk. There is only that child left now. The other wet nurses refuse to take him because he doesn't have a father. He is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. Since he is without a father, where will we find the money to feed him? We can't take an infant for small fee. What we have is barely enough for ourselves. My heart tells me to take this orphan boy and suckle him. I will take him. By Allah, I will take him. Okay. If you insist, take him. Perhaps Allah will give us some blessings through him.
Halima returned to her caravan with the child. No sooner did she place him to her bosom than the milk flowed, and he drank until his thirst was quenched. Then Halima's son also drank until he was full, and the two infants fell asleep. Here, Halima, drink this milk. Milk? Where did you get this from, Abu Abdullah? I went to the camel and milked her, and this milk is for you, so drink! You drink too, Abu Abdullah. You are exhausted. No, it's for you, Halima. I'm quenched and full. How remarkable is this camel? Was she not devoid of milk and weak? How remarkable is this child, Muhammad? Ever since he has entered our home, we have been endowed with goodness and blessings, and have had no cause to complain of anything. As the days passed, the infant Muhammad's presence in the lands of Beni Sa'ad became associated with blessings. The land became fertile after a drought. The date palms bore fruit as they had never done before, and the animals fattened and began to give abundant amounts of milk. Muhammad received lots of interest from the people of Beni Sa'ad. Everyone loved him, and he was a calm child who never cried. He was, peace be upon him, a blessed soul. When Muhammad reached two years of age and was weaned, his mother Amina went to the wet nurse Halima and wanted to take him home. Please, please leave Muhammad with us until he grows stronger. He is as dear to us as our own son Abdullah, and we cannot bear to part with him. After a long discussion, his mother agreed to leave him until he reached five years of age. During this time, many events occurred, one of which was very strange. While Muhammad, peace be upon him, was playing with Abdullah, the son of Halima, the angel Jibreel was sent by Almighty Allah. He came and threw Muhammad to the ground. He cut open his chest and removed a black spot from his heart. He said, this is Satan's share of you. Then he washed the heart and returned it to its place by the power of Allah, who was able to do all things. When Halima learned about this from two servant boys who were playing with Muhammad, she became afraid and returned him to his mother. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرى إن مع العسر يسرى فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فرغب What an incredible situation, Uncle. No doubt Abdullah was very scared. That is true, Anas. Abdullah and Halima did not know then that this was a divine miracle by which Allah chose our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him. Uncle, does that mean that the Messenger's birth and childhood were signs that he would be very important? The lesson I have shared with you today is that the Messenger, peace be upon him, was chosen by Allah from among his creation in order to guide humankind. He chose his name for him and protected him from faults when he removed Satan's share from his heart. I would love to hear the rest of the story, but it's getting late now, and my parents will be worried about me. Wait a minute, Anas. We want to finish the story. Our story is still long, O Hajar. But I want to listen to the rest of the story right now. Our story is long, Hajar. We won't be able to finish it tonight. Let's stop here now, and I promise to finish it for you tomorrow if Allah wills. Thank you, Uncle Yahya. Good night, Uncle Yahya. See you in the morning. <laughs> okay, Hajar. <laughs> Good night.